Hey, how you doing? It's Jason. I'm here with your next lesson, What's in the Bottle? So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you the difference between vodka, gin, rum, tequila, whiskey, bourbon, brandy, scotch, cognac, liquor, liqueur, alcohol by volume and proof, what the hell that all even means, where it comes from, how it's made, similarities, differences. First, let's talk about just what is alcohol? How do you make alcohol? You make alcohol by putting together two ingredients, yeast is put together with sugar. And what happens is yeast will eat the sugar, sweat off this nasty poison called alcohol. And as you can imagine, this stuff when it's made really does kind of taste like shit, so we need to flavor this. And this is the fermentation process. In a nutshell, what we'll do is put some water, sugar, and some yeast, and then something in that big broth of stuff to flavor it. And depending on where we were as humans, we used different things to flavor this broth and came out with different types of alcohols. So in Russia, they used potatoes and they made vodka. Down in the Caribbean, they took sugar cane, chopped that up, melted it down, and that gave them molasses. Then they used that to make rum. Down in Mexico, they chopped up blue agave and made tequila. Over in the Netherlands, they used juniper berries and made gin. Back in the Midwest United States, we used wheat and rye and made whiskey. And then of course you add corn to that and then you're going to have bourbon. So at its core, it's all the same stuff. So once you have this flavored broth of poisonous yeast sweat, you need to separate the alcohol out of this. So this is where the distillation process would come into play. You would take that big broth of flavored poisonous yeast sweat and put it into the still and what would happen is the alcohol is boiled off at a lower temperature than the water because it will boil at a lower temperature than the water. They'll collect the steam, it goes through little cooling coils, and then in your bucket down at the bottom you have your alcohol. So that, in a nutshell, is the distillation process. Now you can take that alcohol, go through that distillation process again. So you take your alcohol that you've distilled once, put it back into the front of the still, go through that whole process all over again, then this alcohol becomes smaller in amount and more pure because the impurities are coming off in the form of steam. And that's double distilled. Do that again. Go through that process again. More impurities come out. This becomes even smaller in amount and more valuable. And that's triple distilled. Do it again. Four times distilled. Do it again. Five times distilled. However times they want. And more valuable. So that's the first way that alcohol has become very expensive is through multiple distillation. The second way that alcohol has become very valuable is through extended periods of aging. So you can take an alcohol and you can put it in a barrel and the longer it sits in a barrel, the smoother it will get. When you take a sip of straight alcohol and you get that that goes away the longer something sits in a barrel. It just becomes very smooth. So again, to recap, Two ways that alcohol has become very expensive. First one is through multiple distillation. And then the second way is that alcohols are aged for an extended period of time in wooden barrels. So the percentage, or the alcohol by volume percentage, and it'll be listed on a bottle of alcohol. What that is, is the percentage of the bottle that is pure alcohol. Let me give you an example. Jack Daniels here, good old American whiskey. This stuff is 40% alcohol by volume. That means that when this bottle's full, it's 40% pure alcohol. And the other 60% is that kind of flavored water stuff that they made it in. There's also proof on a bottle of alcohol. So that you'll see alcohol by volume, and then you'll also see proof. Proof is just your alcohol by volume times two. So 40%. 80 proof. Why do they still have that on the bottles with the alcohol by volume and the proof? I have no idea. They don't do it everywhere. They don't do it in Europe. But in some areas, you know, maybe they keep it as it's just something with marketing. Give me an example with 151. 151, that's the proof of this alcohol. So 151 proof. What is the percentage on that bottle? 75.5% of this bottle, when it is full, is pure alcohol. This is basically the strongest stuff you're gonna see in your bar. And you'll see it in other areas in marketing, 
like there's a banana liqueur called 99 bananas that's a 99 proof banana liqueur there's a wild turkey bourbon they make a wild turkey 101 and that's 101 proof wild turkey So what is a liquor and what is a liqueur or a liqueur? So liquor, L-I-Q-U-O-R, is any distilled hard alcohol. Basically anything you take a sip of when you drink it straight and kind of go, wow, <sighs> kind of one of those, that's usually a liquor. Give you some examples of liquors. Jack Daniels, liquor. Patron Tequila, liquor. Remy Martin Cognac, liquor. Tanqueray Gin, liquor. Absolute Vodka, liquor. Johnny Walker Scotch, liquor. Okay, so that's not everything, but I think you get the point. Anything that's just a straight distilled hard alcohol, that is a liquor. A liqueur or liqueur, L-I-Q-U-E-U-R, is a liquor that is artificially flavored after it comes through the distillation process. So the flavors are really intense, very sweet smelling, very sweet tasting. Basically anything that a high school kid would willingly drink on their own, that is basically a liqueur. So liqueurs, Malibu rum, coconut flavored rum, coconut flavored. Captain Morgan, this one throws a lot of people off. This is spiced, flavored. Southern Comfort, liqueur. So this is bourbon. Look here, bourbon that's sweetened with peaches and honey. Even though this is strong, 100 proof, this is still a liqueur because it's flavored. What about your flavored vodkas, right? Blueberry Stoli, Citron, Citros, basically lemon, flavored Kettle One. Are these liquors or liqueurs? These are liqueurs because they're flavored. Blueberry flavor, lemon flavor. Nowadays, they make every flavor under the rainbow, literally. And it all originated from black licorice liqueurs. That was the original liqueur that was made commonly around the world. So a bunch of different cultures around the world have their own version of this black licorice phenomenon. The most common version that we're familiar with here in America is, of course, the German version of this black licorice liqueur phenomenon. Jägermeister. And because America drinks so much of this, there's all kinds of weird, random stories going on. Just ridiculous stuff. Like this has deer blood in it. On the sun, on the front, it means, oh dear God. Another one, this was created as a medicine. Quasi true. Long time ago, they used alcohol to treat everything, including sickness. So that's sort of true. But that not, was not the original intention. But really, this is just Germany's version of that black licorice liqueur. So moving into our vodkas, a couple other vodka brands that you need to know about. Grey Goose Vodka. This is a French vodka sky. This was created by a guy from San Francisco and first marketed as headache-free vodka. Another brand you need to know, Absolute. This is the number one selling brand of vodka worldwide. Not because it's the best, but just because it's the most well marketed. Another one of my personal favorites in a pretty frosted bottle, this stuff right here, Belvedere. So this is from Poland. This is a Polish vodka. Of course, you can't talk about vodka without talking about the Russians. So Stoli. Stoli brand is Russia's flagship for their vodka over here in America. This happens to be blueberry Stoli, so this is a flavored liqueur. And they make all kinds of different flavors of this stuff. The regular Stoli has a red label and kind of a city skyline on there. Kettle One. This is another really popular one. This is from Holland. Now most of these vodkas that I've been showing you are made with grains. Meaning they're not really made with potatoes anymore. Because potatoes are really hard to keep. You ever bought a bag of potatoes and you get to the bottom there's like arms and legs coming off of them. So imagine if you had a warehouse full of potatoes that you had to try to go through before they went bad to make vodka with. Kind of a challenge. However, there are still a few companies that are keeping it real making potato vodkas. If you want to try a good potato vodka, here's one I can recommend. This is called Blue Ice Vodka. Okay, so those are not all the vodkas you would ever have. 
I'm not going to show you every type of brand of alcohol out there. We would be here for three days. So you'll understand what's going on, but I'm just going to kind of hit the broad strokes. Go to your local grocery store or liquor store or whatever store that has the best selection of hard alcohols and just go in there and check it out. And this is important to do for a couple reasons. Number one, you need to have name brand recognition. So you need to be familiar with these name brands. Also, this is important because you want to upsell people. This is a great little technique that I'll get into a little bit more on another video. But you want to make sure that you are upselling people. So get to know your name brands so that you'll know when people come in and they ask for them. You can upsell people into more expensive alcohols and therefore make more money. Next, let's talk about some gins. So gin was first created in the Netherlands with juniper berries and that piney taste in gin. Those are the juniper berries. But really we have the English, the Brits, to thank for bringing gin to the rest of the world. And they're the ones that really perfected the craft of making good gin. Tanqueray, this is one of the top brands out there. This is definitely one of my faves. Snoop 2, sipping on gin and juice. This is what he was talking about. Another popular gin that you need to know about is Bombay. So you have Raylor Bombay and Bombay Sapphire. This is Raylor Bombay, and if you see this in your bar, it'll be dusty and pathetic and full and nobody's drinking it. Then if you have Bombay Sapphire, this is what everybody wants, and they're going to be ordering all their cocktails with this. And this is a special unique batch that's made separate from regular Bombay, but has real similar ingredients. And sometimes the difference between these is literally a dash of salt or pepper. So when you think of rum, you should think of the islands off of Florida down the Caribbean. And what they would do, they would take sugar cane, melt it down, and that would give them molasses. They'd take the molasses and use that in the fermentation process, and then that's how they would flavor their rum. The regular rum market is dominated by Bacardi. Now there's clear Bacardi, Añejo Bacardi, and there's also gold Bacardi. So what's the difference? Alcohols, when they're made, are completely clear. There's no color to anything. So alcohols can get colors two ways. One, artificially, with food coloring added to it. Or the second way is naturally being aged, añejo, aged in wooden barrels. How do you tell the difference? Usually it'll mention some sort of difference on the bottle aged. If it just says gold, then it's fake gold, meaning it's just food coloring put in there. Then there's coconut rum. Coconut rum world, dominated by Malibu. But they also have competition with Captain Morgan's Parrot Bay. So both of these are coconut flavored rums. Then there is, of course, spice rum. Captain Morgan. This is a favorite of a lot of people. So this is pumpkin pie flavored rum. That was literally the flavors. Cinnamon, nutmeg, that they went after. This is pumpkin pie flavored rum. So our main brand of American whiskey is, of course, Jack Daniels. So Jack Daniels, this was started over 100 years ago in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack makes a couple other ones, like the Gentleman Jack. This is one called a single barrel. So a little bit different than like the private stock, private reserve, single malt type stuff. Single barrels, what this is, is they'll take the Jack Daniels blend and they'll put it in brand new barrels. Because when they age alcohol, they'll use the wooden barrels for a couple of generations before they throw it out. And each successive generation, there's less colors and flavors sinking into the alcohol from the wood. So when a barrel is brand new, that's what's going to have its most flavors and colors coming out of the wood going into the alcohols. So single barrel just means that it's a brand new batch of barrels that were used to age this whiskey. So it's very intense flavors of oak and wood, and people love that stuff, so they're willing to pay for that. So after whiskey, another close relative is bourbon. So bourbon is a type of whiskey. It's corn whiskey. So it's made in bourbon, Kentucky. 
has to have at least 51% corn in that original flavoring process. And then they will age their bourbon in burnt oak barrels. So they'll take oak barrels and they'll burn the inside of them intentionally. And this gives it a nice, unique, smoky characteristic that people like. With Irish whiskeys, you're basically going to have two options in your bar most of the time. You're going to have Bushmills and you're going to have Jamesons. Now, Irish whiskeys and Scottish whiskeys are similar in how they're made because they're both made with malted barleys. Basically, the difference in the flavor characteristics is that Irish whiskeys, when they're in the malting process with their barley, they won't let the smoke from the peat fires touch the grains. And then it goes through a process in the aging that's called sherry maturation which just means that they borrow their barrels when they age their whiskey. So they'll take wine manufacturers, their old barrels, they'll take whiskey or bourbon manufacturers, they'll take their old barrels and then they age their Irish whiskey in those barrels and it gives it borrowed unique characteristics from those other alcohols blended in to their Irish whiskey. So basically everything you need to know about scotch we can learn from Mr. Johnny Walker here. So the number on the front of a scotch bottle tells you how old that scotch is. It tells you how long it's been sitting in a wood barrel before it gets shipped over here and sold. So scotch is also made with a malted barley but it's a little bit different than the Irish whiskey because what they do with scotch is they let the smoke from the peat fires that are drying out the barley, they let the smoke touch those barley grains so it gives it kind of a smoky characteristic whereas with Irish whiskey they don't let the smoke touch the barley. Basically this is smoked malted barley whereas Irish whiskey is just regular malted barley. So first one we have is the Red Label. This is just their basic cheap low-end scotch. They claim that it's aged but you can't look it up and it doesn't say how long which leads me to believe that it's not aged at all and it's just gold food coloring in this. Next, you have your black label, which this stuff has been aged for 12 years. Then you'll have your 15 to 16 year range in Johnny Walker, the green label. Then we have gold label. So gold label, this has been sitting in a barrel for 18 years. Then the flagship of Johnny Walker's brand is blue label. Blue label, this has been sitting in a barrel for 25 years before it's bottled and shipped over to us. And I don't really drink scotch, but this is definitely where I'd like to start. Scotches can also be blends or they can be single malts. Johnny Walker is a blend. That means that they kind of blend their batches together to just keep a consistent flavor. Single malt means there are special unique batches that are made every single year. So Johnny Walker, this is a blended scotch. These are some other common blended scotch whiskeys. You have Chivas and then you have Buchanan's. Then these are some single malt scotches. So these guys, they make special unique batches every single year and they're not blending together their stuff. So it carries characteristics from those specific batches. So common ones, Glen Livet, then Glen Fittick, McAllen's. So make sure when you go into your bar that you know what your best single malt scotch is because you'll have scotch drinkers that will come in and say, Give me your best single malt scotch. That just means whatever your single malt scotch you have that has the highest number or is the oldest. Next, let's talk about brandies and cognacs. So brandy is basically a distilled wine. So another way to say that is if I could take this ball of wine, drill a hole and just suck out the alcohol, that would be brandy. So the quality of the brandy is very much subject to the quality of wine that it's made from. There was a region in France that was known for many, many years for making really good brandy. So Cognac is a region in France. So people started to specifically request brandy from Cognac, France. Cognac is brandy. It's just brandy that's made in Cognac, France. So there's three distinct categories with brandies and Cognacs. There's the bottom shelf. V.S. So V.S. stands for very special or very superior. These are V.S. Cognacs. This is Hennessy and Cavassier. I'm sure you're familiar with these names. Then there's the middle shelf with Cognac, which is 
VSOP. So very special or very superior old pale, older pale in color. This VSOP just means that they're aging the VS longer. So it's very special old pale. And then there's the XO, which stands for extra old or extraordinary. Remy Martin has put themselves on the map as the premier cognac maker in the world. It says fine champagne cognac? What? Fine champagne cognac? Oh shit, man. This is the good stuff. These guys are uniquely located in Cognac, France, right next door to Champagne. So one day at the factory, somebody got the genius idea. Here's what we're going to do. We'll go across the street, we'll grab Champagne grapes. Come back to our house, we'll make wine from those grapes, and then brandy from that wine. So we'll call it Fine Champagne Cognac. Genius. This is just brandy. This stuff sits in a barrel for 25 years before it's bottled and shipped over and sold to us for usually about 200 bucks a bottle. So Remy Martin Fine Champagne Cognac. And cognacs can get ridiculous. They also make a Louis series, they make a Remy Louis the 13th, and it comes in a hand-blown crystal glass bottle that looks kind of like this, but there's a little kind of like spear tips on the end of this thing, and there's this big crown top that fits on there. I've seen it go as cheap as like $1,500 a bottle, but usually it's around that $1,800 to like $2,000 for a bottle about that size. They make a Louis Black Pearl, so Remy Martin makes a Louis series, Black Pearl edition. The price tag on a bottle of Louis Black Pearl is $50,000. Yes, $50,000. So these are for the Bill Gates and the royalties of the world, the people that run the oil countries. Those are the guys that were scratching to get this stuff. Probably not gonna see this in a bar. The only place that I've ever heard has this is in Vegas. If you go to the Wynn Hotel, they have a club called Trist, and then Trist, they have a bottle of Louis Black Pearl. They actually have a cocktail that they sell with this stuff, that they make it with the Louis Black Pearl cognac, and that cocktail alone has a $10,000 price tag. Next one that we'll talk about, my absolute personal favorite, tequila. This stuff is made down in Mexico with the blue agave. So there's a couple of various distinctions with tequila. Basically, most tequila manufacturers make all these different types of tequila. So they'll make a Blanco, which means clear or white, it's not aged at all. Or they can make a Reposado, which means rested. So it's aged in between two and 12 months, usually right around that six month mark. Or it can be an Añejo, which is aged past 12 months, or it can just be gold, which usually just means it's gold food coloring added to it. Here's an example of some white or silver or clear tequilas. Blanco, which means white. Plata, which means silver. Silver, which means silver. Okay, these are clear tequilas. So just because they're not aged or just because there's no color doesn't mean that it's not a good tequila. They can be distilled multiple times and then they're going to be quality alcohols. And the first step in the aging process for a tequila is called a reposado. Me personally, I like reposados. These are my favorites to make margaritas with. I personally think that these make the best margaritas because the silver tequilas, they can have a little bit too much of a agave fruity bite. And then the añejos that are aged longer than these can sometimes have smoky, woody characteristics that will come in. These tend to make the smoothest margaritas. Just my personal preference. Then of course you can go past the 12 month mark in the aging of tequila. And once it goes past 12 months, it now becomes an añejo. So these guys are gonna be a little bit smoother because they've been aged longer. They're gonna be a little bit thicker because they're older. They're gonna have a little more flavors and colors coming out of the wood into their tequila. These are my personal favorites when I'm just sipping on a tequila. If I want to have a nice tequila that I'm just going to sip maybe over the ice with a squeeze of lime and that's about it, then I'm going to go for an Añejo tequila because there's just a lot more flavor coming from the wood barrels into those tequilas. There is, of course, gold tequila. 
So gold tequila just means fake gold because it's not getting its color naturally from the aging process because then it would either be called a reposado or an añejo. So if a tequila says gold, that usually just means fake gold, meaning that it's just food coloring. There's your basic lesson for what's in the bottle. So this is more than enough information that you're probably ever going to need as a bartender. We'll see you next time.